Hey guys, Mike here. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how we poured this 50 foot by 10 foot concrete patio slab. Now it's six in the morning right here when we're getting started, it's about 52 degrees. And I, I left the video in real time mode just to give you guys an understanding of you know, how long it takes to pour something like this, how much time you have to work with the concrete. Uh, rather than speed the video up, and I wanted to give you a little bit better understanding of just what it takes to get something like this poured and how much time you have. Now I'm using a 4000 PSI concrete for this. I've also got fiber mesh in it, so we got wire mesh reinforcing. We got our slab bolsters under the wire. And then we got a double row rebar, some, in some places a triple row rebar on that outside edge. That outside edge is actually two inches lower also. I feel, I know, it's kind of hard to see in the video, but so it's about eight inches thick on that outside edge and the rest of the slab is about six inches thick. I did all the prep here. I did the forming, did the styrofoam, you know, the wire and the rebar. I got it all ready. Put the, I got isolation strip foam up against the building and up against that retaining wall there in the background. And now we're just getting this slab poured. We're going to put a, a broom finish on this, so I'll have that in uh, part two of this video. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, go ahead and down there and hit subscribe now so you can see part two of, and see how we finish the concrete. Now Darren's running the chute, he's just getting the concrete dumped out. We'll dump out about half of this pad, about 25 feet of it. Again, I said it's 50 feet long and about 10 feet wide. We'll get about half of it dumped out before we start screeding it. Luke's breaking the concrete down, getting it as close as he can to grade by eye. And then I'm in the background there, kind of magging edges shooting my grade, making sure everything is right to where it needs to be. We got a two inch slope and 10 feet on it, so it's all sloping out towards the parking lot. This is at a big church, so they're gonna have a big parking lot out here. They'll have all that paved, and it'll end up looking really nice. I'll show you what that's gonna look like in the part two video, the finishing video. I'm gonna let this play out in real time so you can watch us watch the speed we work at you know we don't we don't need to hurry we know how much time we have to work with concrete because we work with it every day but you guys that don't work with it every day you know, just wondering oh that was a big cement ball sometimes the cement gets caught up in a ball inside the drum and it doesn't break up you know, sometimes you get these little cement balls so if you ever get any of those just toss them aside break them up but I just wanted to give you guys a sense of, you know, how long you have to work with this stuff and get it down before it starts actually setting up on it. Now we're pouring this at about a, probably around a five and a half to six inch slump. And my mixes always have water reducer in it. If you've ever watched any of my other videos, you know that. And what the water reducer does is it's a chemical they add at the batch plant when they batch the concrete out. It just allows you to pour a little bit looser slump, for you guys that don't know that, so without hurting the integrity of the concrete, the strength of the concrete. And that Darren's telling him just to lock the chute in place for a second and he's got to go grab something. So when the concrete driver sees that, he locks it and then he unlocks it and then tell him to do it again. Just holding the lock and right there. So we're gonna we're gonna get this all ready to, to get screeded, and then we'll get this down, get it both loaded, and we'll move on to the second part of it. So because we got the slab bolsters under there, that means you know we don't usually pull the wire up when we have those under there. That keeps it up off the ground enough to make it useful. And we use the secondary reinforcement, the fiber mesh in the concrete, to also help out. So we always use a double reinforcement. For you guys that are wondering why there's styrofoam under there, we got two inches of styrofoam under this. We live in Maine, and in Maine we have a lot of freeze thaw cycles starting about the mid to the end of November through 
March, we will get a, a lot of really cold weather, below freezing weather. And the styrofoam helps insulate the ground. It helps keep the frost from getting under the slab like this and lifting it. So a lot of our exterior floors like this will have styrofoam. It is expensive, you know, it's about 35 bucks a sheet for a 4 by 8 sheet, so it's it's not cheap to put this stuff under it, but if you're ever worried about frost lifting your slab, that's definitely worth putting under it. You can see Luke, he's got the DeWalt pencil vibrator, he's vibrating the edge, making sure that edge is going to be nice and smooth. There'll be about five or six inches of that outside outside edge exposed after the, the parking lot's paid, kind of like a curve. So we want to make sure that's going to be nice and smooth when we strip that form. Now I'm checking my grades. I want to make sure that this is perfectly sloped away from the building. You know, there's going to be a, a lot of water hit this when it rains hard so we don't want any water going up against the building or back into those doors you can see I got my ISO that white foam I have is my ISO strip up against the building but I'm just double checking my grades as I go because you know there's only you know I got one chance to get something like this right and we want to make sure it's perfect that's just the way we do things I got my laser over there in the corner. You see old by Luke where he's grabbing that straight edge. That's where I got my laser set up. I like I use the Topcon RL H5B for a laser. That's that works good for slopes. It works good for level flat stuff. It's got you know the two to three hundred foot range on it where it's plus or minus about a sixteenth of an inch. So it's it's a pretty accurate level. I have that now. I link down in the description for that guys if you want to check that out. That's the one I recommend using for concrete work. So we got Darren and Luke screeding now. Darren's on the inside, kick screeding, and Luke's using the top of the form to screed by. And I'm just raking the concrete behind me. You can see here, we've got it a little bit low, so what we're going to do is we'll just back up the concrete truck a little bit, back him back in there, dump a little out, rather than try to pull all that back in there. You know, we'll pull a little bit in there. But the easiest thing to do is just back the truck back in. It only takes a second. So we've got about a 500 square foot patio, like I said. Now, how many of you guys out there are thinking of doing a patio around the house? Let me know down in the, the comments below. Also, you know, where are you from? What state are you from? What city are you from? That would help. Let everybody know where you're from, what you're trying to do, what the size of the patio you're trying to do. If you're watching this video, it must have because you want to have something to do with a concrete patio. At the end of this video, too, you'll see where I'll have a link for the concrete underground. And inside the concrete underground, I show you, and I have a bunch of training videos on how to do stuff like this. How to form it, how to prep it, how to pour, how to finish. All those types of training videos are inside the concrete underground. For you guys who want to learn more about how to do this. And that, that'll pop up at the end of the video, and the link is down in the description, guys, if you want to check that out. see we're about 10 to 15 minutes now about 10 minutes into this pour and we're not hurrying by any means you got you know we got plenty of time like I said it was it was about 52 degrees when we started this morning it's gonna get up into the, the high 70s today so we like starting early in the morning when things are cool especially in the summertime and that gives you a little bit more working time versus 
if you try pouring this in the afternoon when the sun's out strong and beating up against the building and the temperatures are 20 to 25 degrees warmer then you're going to want to be hustling a little bit more this concrete it doesn't have any accelerator in it it doesn't have any retarder in it to slow it down it's just regular it's just regular 4000 psi concrete no fly ash no slag in it We do have air entrainment in this, but the air entrainment doesn't really affect the set time at all. All the air entrainment does is it allows water that gets absorbed into the concrete room to expand when it does freeze and not pop the surface of the concrete. So that's what air entrainment is for. And you guys down south, you probably never have to worry about using air entrainment, but us here in the north and probably you in the midwest and stuff where we get a lot of freezing temperatures we all pour concrete exterior concrete with air entrainment one load of concrete is going to be enough to do this this, this is ten and a half yards we get. a lot of these rear dump concrete trucks here in Maine too. We do have, some companies do have some front loaders, but what do you guys pull with the most? We pull with these rear dumps the most. We pull with front dumps, we pull with rear dumps. Uh, we also have conveyor trucks here. This company has a couple conveyor trucks. We'll, we'll use those occasionally. The conveyor will reach about 40 feet. So that saves us from having to pump the concrete sometimes. But most of the time, we're pouring out of the chute like this on the rear dump. See how we got that first pot screeded, right? And I haven't gone back to bulk load it yet. What we like to do is, when there's three of us, you know, rather than one guy going right back and bulk loading and having two guys try to dump this, which they could, it's just a little easier with a rear dump like this. You know, if you got one guy running the chute and then you got a couple guys breaking down, or at least one guy breaking down, and then one guy kind of nagging edges and shooting grades, so as soon as we get a little bit more of this poured out, we'll have one guy go back and do the bolt loading, and then the other two guys will continue to get the concrete ready to get treated. How many of you guys think Luke and Darren there like, Luke is there on the right, Darren's on the left, are brothers. Let me know down in the comments. Do <laughs> you think they're brothers or not? This gives you a really good idea how stiff that concrete is. It's not like, not like crazy stiff, but it's not very wet either. It's, it's a pretty good mix for pouring a two-inch slope and ten feet like this. There's Luke again with the with the Walt pencil vibrator. That thing's really handy. It's really convenient for just flat work like this. It's not big and bulky. Just plug the battery in it. You don't have to worry about you know a power cord or any, or a gas powered one or anything like that. The battery in it will last quite a while. So. That thing's really convenient. So again, I'm double checking my grades. I'm making some wet pads there up against the building. We didn't really want to snap a chalk line on that. They had some type of some type of builder's paper there up against the building and it was just a little bit looser than I was uh, comfortable with snapping a chalk line on. So 
I wanted to make sure I shot my grades using the laser, then I, I wouldn't have any worries. When Luke's magging that, that board there, he's, I don't know if you saw him, but he lifted the straight edge up and he was checking his string line to make sure that board was staying nice and straight. It's just something we do automatically without even thinking of it. Now Darren's back there bow floating. You can kind of see the bow float in the background. So he went back and he'll get that all bow floated nice and smooth. And that kind of helps prepare it for the finishing process. The better he bow floats that, the smoother he gets it without any lines, the easier it's going to be for us to finish later on. So he's just taking his time. Again, no, no big hurry here. Not at 50 something degrees in the morning. And we're still kind of in the shade, you know, the sun's really not up here yet, so... Definitely we're not having to hurry. Also, when I, earlier when I talked about the concrete underground, you know, I talk about I talk about bidding, estimating jobs like this, how much it costs. Uh, how much profit you're going to make off stuff like this. So, you know, we go into the business aspect of things too in the concrete underground. I know some of you guys have been asking me about going into business for yourself and figuring out bidding and estimating and how to make money at that. And, you know, we'll cover that in there on stuff like this. How much do you think, let me know down in the comments, how much do you think a job like this costs? You know, what what do you give me your guesses on what you think it'll cost and then I'll take a look at those and then I'll I'll comment later on of what the actual bid price was for something like this. That's the motion we screed with. You know, a lot of guys will saw back and forth. We weren't taught to saw back and forth. I was taught when I was 15. I'm 55 now, so a long time ago. This is the way I was taught to screed. There was no power screeds back then, no vibra screeds, no nothing like that. It was all hand screeding back then. And I was taught to, to hand screed and kick screed by pulling the rod towards you while you're kicking and filling in where your feet are and moving backwards all at the same time. And we did, we did many, many floors that way, big ones, little ones. Um, I was on thousand yard pours where we would kick screed like that. I was, you know, hospitals, schools, parking lots, all kinds of big, big stuff I started out on when I was younger. Luke's going to check that back there on that back edge just to make sure everything's nice and flat and level across there. And that's as simple as it is right there. That's how you check it. And we can just keep going. No dips, no humps. We want it nice and flat across the back. Eventually what they're going to do here is they're going to build a big deck off the back of this church and this will be under the deck. 
and this will be their entryway to whatever they're doing down here in the basement. This is a pretty big building. It's probably it's probably a hundred by fifty as far as the building goes. It's a big, big, big. It's a big building. And it's a big church. There's a lot of people that go to church here. So we got enough concrete in where we need it, and the concrete driver is backing around to go wash his suit. I'm finishing up that second part of the bolt loading. Now Darren Luke are magging their edges, getting it ready to screed so we can get the rest of this screeded. And this is the process, so you you know you just get the concrete poured out, don't pour out more than you can handle at once. Get your edges and your grades all shot and ready to go, then get, get it screeded and bolt floated. What you're hoping to do is get the concrete down in plenty of time before someone has to go back and start finishing. Especially if there's only three of you like this. Now if you can't kick screed like Darren's doing, you can just pull it towards you, you know, two, three, four times, stop, set back, and just do that process. It's not quite as fast, but it'll get it done. Adding the kicking in with it is a little more difficult. That takes some practice, takes a little bit of time. Just like Darren's doing right now, you can just pull it towards you, and then stop and set back and pull it towards you again. As long as you're not digging in on your wet pad, and you're going to be just fine. Yeah, so I'm going to finish that, up that bow floating. And then we're going to have some time before we need to finish this. Because this took us probably about 30 minutes total to get in. I mean, we didn't, we didn't hurry by any means. It was, we weren't super fast at all, but we didn't need to be. We're just being careful, making sure everything was done right and done perfect. Which is, in the end of the day, if you're doing this for a customer, that's what you want to do. You can see I'm going over each area twice, you know, once isn't good enough to get it smooth enough so we'll go over it twice pushing down the, the rocks and the aggregate down a little bit bringing up some cream and paste to the surface it's really filling it in making it nice and smooth when I when I stop that bow float and I pick it up it leaves a tiny bit of a line so you can kind of see that and you don't just want to walk away and leave that there when you're done. You know, when you're done bow floating, just go back real quick and use your hand mag and mag float that line out. That way, if the sun does come up and you do get behind, you know, the concrete starts setting up on you a bit. At least you don't have to worry about that line, having to mag that line out later. It's already been done. This is what I mean by that. See, I'm coming back, just magging that line out real quick. It's only going to take a second. Just go down the line, get it magged out. Darren's getting the string out of the way. And then you're going to be sitting around waiting for the concrete to set up a little bit. I've got all kinds of videos on when to start finishing concrete. You guys can check them out if you want. And then also, remember, part two is going to be how we finish this patio. So make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know when to come back and see that video. And then also, you can see here, here we are starting to finish this thing right here. There's the concrete underground where you can learn how to do all the same stuff we do. The link will be down in the description below so you can check that out. 
And thanks again, guys, for watching the video. Make sure you subscribe and come back, and we'll see you on the next one.